Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Paul. We're vaping mode. Oh, yes, indeed. What are we doing today, Paul? Today, we are talking about this, which is... Heat vape is the invader from heat vape. And uh, how would you describe it? It's a regulated temperature controlling... Tubular? Tubular mod. But what's uh, the difference between that and the others? This one is ruggedized. Ruggedized. <laughs> ruggedized for rugged guys. I like that. Ruggedized for rugged guys. Yeah, or rugged girls. Do you know any? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should have a look at this close before we get diverted off into one of our little random moments, don't you? Before it gets too random, I think we should. Let's have a look. So here we go, the heat vape mini invader. <clears throat> At the front it tells you quite clearly, 600 degrees Fahrenheit and 50 watts. We have a picture of the four different available versions there, colour wise. Um, same again, just tells you the um, different marks it's passed and a QR code. Take off the sleeve. And there we have it. The Invader Mini. Uh, on the back of this box actually gives you the technical specifications there. On the specification we have a minimum power of 1 watt and a maximum of 50 watts. We have a uh, output voltage which is going between 1 to 9.9 .9 volts. The um, two different obviously types of um, resistance we're going to have is we're going to have temperature controlled resistance and we're going to have the uh, standard normal atomizer resistance. Temperature control goes from 0.1 up to 1 and the standard mode goes from 0.16 up to 2 ohms. Um, so quite a range in there. Um, that's really about it, all you need to know from that point of view. Let's yeah. actually have a look at the box. Stop the boring stuff, get in the bloody box. Right. I'm going to pull this right away out. There is quite a comprehensive instructions, although Paul did notice there was a couple of uh, wording errors within there that aren't very good, but nothing majorly to scare you. Uh, it gives you full instructions on how to use the mod, um, and uh, within these instructions here it goes through the different areas within the chip, i.e. the power on off, putting it in and out of stealth mode, how to put it in and out of different temperature modes, locking it, uh, looking at your ohms, because it's got an, an ohm reader on it, um, right the way through. And obviously it tells you about your weak battery, etc. We're gonna get rid of that boring stuff as well. We're gonna get straight onto this. What do you need to know about it? Well, from my point of view, apart from the obvious controls on it, let's just go through and tell you it takes an 18650 battery. So let's unscrew this. Still unscrews. There we go. We've chucked in an EFS 35 amp in there. The at the bottom there, the adjustment for the battery is floating, so that it's sprung. That takes up the battery rattle then, yeah. That takes up your battery rattle. That very looks quite nice. That little sort of piston, rather than just a shonky yeah. sort of spring. It's very easy to turn actually, and also you'll notice on here one of the key parts is it has a seal on there. There's a silicon seal along that edge. A red one you can see so that's very good it actually feels quite nice to be honest with you very easy to um, thread wise it's very smooth um, so, so he says as so he's you're, you're fumbling, it look so smooth I am making it look really really smooth it's just me being a fool um, right the top section with the 510 this is how you use it so what you would normally do is you haven't got a floating 510 in here, this is fixed. So you would take your atomizer, you would actually screw it to the top cap first. Then you would take the complete top cap and this section and you would screw it down onto the mod. Yeah, I'm guessing that's they don't really want a sprung connection in there because of the fact it's got to stay water resistant. It's actually it? waterproof. This it's well, I say water resistant IPX4, which is the same kind of um, rating that you would expect a pump 
or something like that for a bathroom or any electrical device within a bathroom, fans, yeah, light fans. fittings, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, they're all IPX4. Not beneath the water, but being able to cope with like spray and a mm. temporary immersion, if you like. Um, you'll have to forgive us if there's a few little dents and digs on this. Um, you'll see the reason why in a little bit. Um, so that's it. Basically, the reason this is fixed is to keep the waterproof as well. So I don't have any issues with this as a way to actually adjust your 510. I find it quite simple, to be honest with you. But it doesn't look too unattractive, does it, when it goes down? There's a no. gap. It's not really noticeable there. Exactly. So turning the device on and off. Now, bearing in mind, the reason we're not going to go into loads of fine detail about this part of it is because it is very logical. It's what pretty much all the other devices do. Turning it on and off is five clicks. This is uh, not a temperature atty in here. This is standard uh, camphor build. Um, so what should happen is when you fire it and you use it, it should actually ask you for a new coil. Uh, but this is the, the device I had on it last time, so it's not going to ask me that, it's just going to remember it. But if we take a, can you pass me a temperature sensitive coil please? There we go, but there's a Kanga with a, a knife, an I200 build in it. There we go. So this has got NI200, it's got a 0.5 ohm or thereabouts coil in it. Screw that down, tighten it down there. And it asks us new coil up, same down. This is a new coil, so we're going to click up and you can see it's in temperature mode, 450 degrees. Now, basic controls are, if you want to flick it back to your standard mode, what you would do is you would press this five times to lock it. Then you would hold down the temperature plus and minus, ask you whether you want to change temperature on it once you held it for a little while, and then you can change the temperature on it. We're going to put it up to, yeah, we've got to 500 for argument's sake. Press that to set it, that's it. Now you can unlock it and I'm ready to vape. pretty straightforward so um, you can put it into stealth mode if you want you can manually flick it between temperature control mode and uh, standard mode I don't think there's any other function that really I'd use no I think what it, what it basically the functions work by putting it into lock mode once you've pressed it five times to lock the fire button then holding the fire button with the plus or holding the fire button with the minus We'll give you all sorts of options through the yeah, menu. Yeah, you can go right-handed mode, left-handed mode. You can raise the wattage, lower the wattage. All very, very straightforward. Um, you would think that it being the fact that you've got um, a sealed unit both ends, you'd have a worry about um, battery venting. But apparently, if the battery does vent, then it breaks through this point here. So there is a point. Right, so there's a built-in weak spot. In the there is a built-in weak spot. Um, we've got an extra one, which we'll show you in a little bit. That we've put in there mm -hmm. anyway enough of this i think we need to test it because it's meant to be rugged what do you think paul i think it's time to get rugged with the ruggedized let's get manly hold on mate the mud's on the floor what? you've just driven over your mud what are you doing from there you know it just fell Killed it. Just leave it to turn the box up a bit. <laughs> Brilliant. So it's quite easy to set the uh, temperature mode. Sorry. Uh, temperature mode. Right. Okay.
Paul, pass us to the mod. There you go, mate. Bollocks. That's safe. What's the matter with you? It's like alive, mate, honestly. Look, look, every time I look, I hold it like that, there's no problem whatsoever. I can double the bloody thing and then bloody... Paul, what are you doing? Just vape it. You're so aggressive. What was I saying about buns? Did you read the manual? Yeah, when they. I don't know that it will. I think you might have got into the chipset. There's, there's actually a pellet wedged in the side here. Can we have an atty, please? Yeah. Oh, it's on the table. Let's take it over. Have a Oh, bollocks, no, my storage is cocked out. Try it, Paul. <laughs> we can't kill it. Scene of domestic, domestic bliss. It's, you do a better job. Like cup. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, hold on. Let me just rinse the cup. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I would say that's probably Come one. On one knackered here. Yeah, try that. Don't I'm stomp all, on that. I'm, I'm, all fingers. <laughs> I'm all fingers and thumbs. All fingers and thumbs, mate. Oh no. I think. I think we finally get to have a vape. <laughs> if you're a housewife and you're looking for a mod, this is the perfect time. So there you go. A rugged device indeed. Yeah. So, what we don't like about this device, um, there's not a lot, but the obvious things for us are the operating system doesn't always, when you put a new ATI on, it does read new ATI, but it doesn't always automatically change between temperature and standard mode. No, no, you have to actually like give it a nudge in the right direction. Apart from that, it has pretty much everything you would need on there. Uh, on the operating system, it could be more intuitive, but that's not what this device is about. It works, it does a job, and it actually functioning, got no issues with it. Yeah. Uh, it's a weighty device. It's a weighty device. Um, aesthetically, um, take this excellent atomizer off of it. <laughs> Sorry, it's mine. Um, and just look at this on its own. Aesthetically. Top cap is chrome plated brass. Similarly, the bottom cap where the battery is put in, not really a big issue, but it doesn't look like stainless steel, shall we say. Um, the rubberized coating, obviously, that is what like gives it. I like black and chrome. I like black and I chrome. I think the contrast between the mm. black silicone and the chrome, I think yeah. it's actually quite good. Yeah. I'm not. 
I would love to prefer something a little, maybe a little all like plainer for all this, uh, I don't know, transformer sort of inspired sort of stuff that's on here. But that's me personally, that's subjective. Um, it certainly does exactly as it should. It takes a beating and carries on working. What more do you want from a ruggedized device? It's the kind of mod. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't worry about the aesthetics. I actually don't mind the way it looks. But what I would say to you is, that I would quite happily luz that in my toolbox. If that looked how you're describing, I wouldn't want to luz it in my toolbox. And I think this is the thing: is at the end of the day, you have to, as a workaday mod, something that you're not worried about, something you can drop, uh, as a workhorse that you can take on your sports missions. Bit of rock climbing, sailing, building. If you're a builder, it's a perfect mod for yeah. you, and that is what this is about. This isn't about aesthetics. This is about actually practicality, function. So, purely from that point of view, I think it's only fair that we mark it from that point of view. That would go in my toolbox. Yeah, yeah. I would be quite happy to like take that with me to work and. And I don't think it's going to ever let you down. No, no. Um, how much is it? It is uh, £60 retail. And yeah. uh, we got it from John Bold, uh, yeah. who's a well-known vape distributor. If you want to get hold of John Bold for some equipment, um, you can catch him on our Facebook page. He's always around there, uh, happy to help out. Um, that's the easiest place to get hold of him. Um, it's going to be available in the UK from Vapor Hut. .co.uk. Yeah. £52.99 at the moment, which is a bit of a bargain, so really worthwhile getting. All you've got to do well, is. Well, for a temperature control device on its own, it's a, that's a relative bargain, I think. Yeah. And the fact that it's also ruggedised is only a bonus, really. It's off. Going <laughs> back to me, Viking stuff there. Oh, oh my sorry. Do you want me to tell you about that? Not the day, thank you. Okay. Anyway, just to let you know, we have decided that we have fallen in love with the fact that ours has been shot. Yeah. We've we left the pellet better. in there. We actually put the pellet, we shot it before we did the water test, just so you know, <laughs> which we found funny. We, we were like, why did we do it that shit. way now? Now we've got to do a water test, yeah. I didn't expect the pellet to get embedded in it. No, you sort of hoped it would bounce off, didn't you? That's why he was wearing the safety glasses. <laughs> and can we just say as well, children, please don't do the kind of things that we do. <laughs> Was that enough of a safety warning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful out there, kids. Mm. Play safe. We rate this. We like it. We've had fun. Thanks That's all you much. need to know. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye.